With hundreds and thousands of people losing jobs, barely living on benefits from their government, local businesses are struggling to survive, and even big businesses are filing for bankruptcy. And to top it all off, stocks are reaching record peaks while ignoring the economy. The analysts are divided, some saying peaks will continue, while others are waiting for another doomsday. So at confusing times like this, where logic seems to be separated from the stock market, where there's so much noise everywhere about people betting on what's going to happen, the real question becomes, who to trust, what to trust, and why? From our perspective, what we think we can rely on is what the great investors of the world are doing. What are some of the key indicators that help us understand the market and what has history shown us? So if you haven't guessed already by the thumbnail and intro, the greatest investor of all time that we're referring to is Warren Buffett. So let's start with him. The legendary investor Warren Buffett said this year, Never bet against America. But the issue with that being is that afterwards, his company Berkshire Hathaway bought a small percentage of their portfolio in Barrick Gold, which is usually considered as a safe haven investment in times of doubt. This makes his quote contradictory. But having said this though, we need to look into Warren Buffett's actions, not so much his words, because as the saying goes, actions speak louder than words. So let's take a look at his other actions. Buffett's company bought a stake in a gold mine, natural gas company, and a retail supermarket company. Furthermore, he sold his bank, petroleum, and airline stock. One thing those companies he bought have in common is that those companies are resilient against inflation. In fact, they may even perform better in the case of gold mines. When Buffett decides to reduce his exposure in certain industries by exiting his stake, whether it be in a profit or loss, to buy into other industries that may not be at the desired price at the time indicates that his future outlook in terms of the direction of the market has changed significantly. The trades mentioned earlier were made in April, May, and June of this year, and only in August these trades were disclosed. Same with whatever trades were slash will be made in July, August, and September, which will only be disclosed a few months later, perhaps in November. So for us to use this information for our own trading may not be useful as the information to us is not timely and the market could be reflected any time in between. So we can't wait for this delayed information. So it may be wise to use the hints of the recent trades to make our own informed decisions on the direction of the market. Currently, the world economy is trembling. GDP growth rate is at a record low. Looking at the current COVID-19 situation, it looks like it will continue into spring, and at earliest, meaningful economic recovery would start towards the end of the year or next year. Jobs are being lost day by day, and the vaccine that we were all hoping for is still not out. And many medical experts are saying it may take as long as mid-year next year before a vaccine will be available, meaning the economy will continue to go in a downwards trend potentially until then. Along with this, Buffett has made some bets on inflation-resilient stocks. So with high unemployment and slow economic growth, if inflation is added, this is called stagflation. Generally, a small inflation in the economy is considered to be good. As money loses value to inflation each year, this in turn encourages people to spend and borrow money which aids in the stimulation of the economy. To meet the inflation target, the Federal Reserve is endlessly printing money and recently, Jerome Powell, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, announced the average inflation targeting policy, which would allow for higher inflation. But inflation while the economy is stagnating is a whole different story. This means while prices of goods are increasing and the income of the average person staying the same, times become very tough. The prime example of when this happened was in the 1970s oil crisis, which resulted in the S&P 500 going down from 118 points to 63 points. The second oil crisis happened in the 1980s, and there, the S&P 500 went from 141 points to 106. However, after all these falls, it was followed by a V-shaped recovery. So if you were prepared, you could have taken advantage of this V-shaped recovery. However, if you aren't prepared, you just have to sit back and watch while you miss out on all the gains, which we all know is a kick in the gut for sure. So even for long-term investors, it is important to be prepared. Investing is not just about predicting the future, but also being prepared for when things happen. In the 1970 and 1980 stagflation, Buffett was nimble enough to avoid much of the rainy days and took advantage of it. As well as before the 2008 crash, Buffett warned about stagflation, which again he took advantage of, which led him to become the world's second richest man for a very long time. Although Buffett has not mentioned anything about stagflation, as he still may have some belief that a significant crash may not come and does not want to fully bet on it just yet. If you think we are headed into that direction and just want to prepare a small percentage of your portfolio for it, what are some ways to do it? One way to do it is to buy gold, which is historically known to be the hedge against inflation. The 2007 to 2011 period saw gold jump from $700 to peaking at $1,900 in 2011. At this time, it would have been worthwhile to invest in gold, but if there's no inflation, you cannot make any gains on the gold, as Warren Buffett knows this very well and has famously quoted, 
If you own one ounce of gold for eternity, you will still own that one ounce of gold at its end. But there is also another way, which is investing in gold mines, which may help even if there's no inflation. Gold mines are businesses which dig out gold from the ground and sell it. So if the mine is already making positive cash flow, your investment is still doing something. Because in essence, the mine company is still a business, as opposed to just holding gold, where if inflation doesn't occur, your investment just stays put with no benefit. However, in the case where the gold price rises, the gold mine becomes even more profitable, which gives it a leveraged effect. But the risk being, this does mean if the gold price drops, the effect will be even worse. So why doesn't Buffett publicly say there could be a crash? Well, Buffett has never said and never will say in public there's going to be a crash to sell everything. Why? Because he is one of the most influential investors in the world. And if he says something like this, he could cause a crash even if it shouldn't have. If Warren Buffett publicly announces that X bank will go bankrupt, everyone using that bank will withdraw their funds and cause a bank run. And if this happens, the bank will actually go bankrupt. After all, Warren Buffett is an investor too. He makes money by his stocks increasing in value. There's no need for him to say something is going to crash. Although he doesn't directly say that there will be a crash, he does use indicators to mention something is not right in the market or just simply mention something like, it's okay to not do anything. We don't see anything that attractive to do. We as investors can take those kind of words as hints. Some people nowadays say that Warren Buffett is no longer as good as he used to be and he's too old and his decision making skill has deteriorated. But nothing about him has changed. He's just being the same old Warren Buffett. As he said, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. Of course he would have made much more fortune if he recently invested aggressively. But all he's doing is just preparing for rainy days. In the long term, the stock has always recovered. History has shown us. So it is correct that investment should be made on a long term basis. However, if you're not prepared for any situation and your stock's halves in value, you may not be able to take advantage of an opportunity that could contribute significantly to your early retirement. So in a nutshell, having a long term for focus is the right mindset. But that does not mean you shouldn't prepare and take advantage of potentially V-shaped recoveries or prepare for the rainy days. It's all part of investment and investing. Using indicators or hints from people of influence is a great start into asking the question, is it time to start preparing? We can never time the market. All we can do is use the information around us. And as they say, knowledge is power. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. We wanted to try this type of content out and broaden our coverage in the investing world. Do let us know what you think of this type of content and if you enjoyed this. As always, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe button if you haven't so already. We'll see you next time.